fitness related health wellness, right? And I've had some really great conversations and I just woke up this morning, man, and I, I'm going to start dropping F-bombs because they make me feel better about myself. But That's all right. We, we, we can have F-bombs. Yeah, I just, I just got fucking upset, you know? I, I, I'm going to try not to call anyone out by name or by business name to sh- just spare them. But to see these fear-mongering based marketing campaigns and these all of a sudden overnight experts in the world of coronavirus shutdown is like, fuck you. Who do you think you are? You know, when you have guys like Mark Cuban that are billionaires on TV basically saying like, listen, you got to hold on tight, you know, do some triage, make some smart decisions, search for some opportunities, pivot where you need to. And even they're not giving definitives of how to operate. Who are you with your little meager ass six or small seven figure business to think you've got it all figured out when literally we all were introduced to Corona at the same time. Not one person, you know, or I know have ever been quarantined in a position where they've had to shut their business down while the entire fucking universe was force mandated to close. None of us have, we don't know anybody that's ever dealt with that. We don't. And if you do, they're from another universe or have a time machine and somehow have lived through the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic Mm -hmm. epidemic. Like, we don't know of it. So this is new to everybody, right? And you can tell I'm starting to get fired up. I like it. I'm letting you go. And so so to, 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 to all of a sudden go from being a consultant in the fitness space to now being an expert on how to transition to the digital online space to now all of a sudden putting out giant giant numbers of advertisements based on fear mongering it's just like are you kidding me you're going against everything you would normally teach in your world of consulting You, myself, we know, we've been taught at the base level of leadership skills, tribal development, community and culture development, ethos and ecosystem. Use all your fucking $8 terms from every book you ever bought, right? Just bury all those in there to sound smart. Not one of them ever told you that making a fear-based purchase, a fear-based decision, a fear-based motive, a fear-based leadership uh, uh, initiative was ever the right thing to do yet here we are and it's all I'm seeing in my Facebook feed from these so-called experts that are telling me is your gym going to survive are you going to be here in 30 days and I'm just like how do you sleep at night then I dig a little deeper and you find out they're charging huge amounts of money for their fucking bullshit it's unbelievable to me how is that helping our community, our ownership community? If you've got it all figured out and you're so good at what you do, maybe you just give that answer away. It's like, it's like somebody having the, the vaccine for the coronavirus and being like, I'm not giving it to you. You got to pay me a million bucks. And you're like, yeah, but if, if you don't give it to me, I can't make a million and then I die. We both lose. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's making great sense. I'm, I'm- As you're saying all this, I'm trying to figure out who you may be referring to. And I know you don't want to put names out there, but what are some of the other, if you had to dive deeper into it for box owners that are listening, so they don't fall into the trap of putting out this money or in my opinion, worse, like getting behind all this fear. Like what are some, what are some of the things they need to be on the lookout for? I'll give you the quick. And again, buddy, let me tell you something. I'm not the expert, but I'm a guy with a huge staff that I'm continuing to keep employed, even if I have to go out of pocket, because I owe it to them out of their loyalty of 10 years to me, right? Um, I've become a fairly wealthy guy in this space, thanks to everyone's hard work, and I've spread that wealth amongst my team. So I owe it to them. Now, some people are gonna listen to this and be like, ah, he got fucking rich, what is he saying wealthy? No, you get to justify your wealth with your own numbers. You don't know how I'm justifying it, so stop judging me. 
You know what I mean? Right, my well. I've lived a pretty good life and so have they. So when, when, so when you ask me, I say, I'll give you my perspective, right? The best I know. And here's where it's at. I think the first thing you need to do is you need to mitigate the damage, right? Which we all know. Contact and communicate with your, with your team, first and foremost, to make sure you understand what your strategy is and how you're going to deploy it, how you're going to implement it, how you're going to execute it, how you're going to continue to take action on it. The second thing is you then need to clearly, concisely, and consistently communicate that to your membership. And you only get one shot to do it the first time, which most of us are well past, right? So that's now in the rear view. Now that we're past that opportunity of that first initial engagement of how you handle a shitstorm, you're now in the management portion of the shitstorm, right? You've already gotten in the lifeboat of the sinking ship, right? You don't know how deep the water is. You don't know how long it can stay afloat. You don't know if it's going to sink. You just know it hit a fucking iceberg, and now all of a sudden everybody around you is telling you it's going to sink. So what you did was you threw the lifeboat off the side of the ship and you got in it. You don't know if it was the right lifeboat. You don't know if the ship's actually going to sink. You don't know if you should have stayed on it to patch the hole, but you're on the ship. You're on the lifeboat. The ship hasn't sunk yet and it hasn't let you haven't, it's not out of your sight, but you're on it. Now you have to decide, do you stay on the lifeboat and follow my crazy JP analogy here? It'll all make sense in a minute. I'm on it. I'm with you. Do you stay on the lifeboat and go in a new path and find a new ship to set sail on and you allow some of that kind of carnal damage and and death to occur, right? Like some people are going to sink with the ship, but you've kept your certain levels of generals and certain people in place and try to to use this analogy as your own business, right? And now you're going to sail off. So now I'll I'll patch this into reality. I wish people could see this too. They could see my animation. We can put put this video up. So now you say, well, okay, let's, let's imagine our ship is our brick and mortar, because that's who I'm speaking to first and foremost, brick and mortar affiliates. The lifeboat is all of a sudden this transition phase because our brick and mortar has a virus on it. We had to escape. It's sinking, right? There's a, it's got a viral component that things are falling apart and dying. We had to escape. The lifeboat is, is an idea. That's our lifeboat right now right? It's an idea that we've got to go digital because that's all everyone thinks they need to do right now. They've got to go online and full digital, right? On that lifeboat is Zoom, True Coach, Train Heroic, Workout and Warm Up, NC Collective, Street Parking, like that's who your crew is. Now you have to select who you're going to continue to take on your lifeboat, right? Those are all your components for this new path, right? But your ship hasn't necessarily sunk yet. But a lot of these experts are trying to make you believe it's going to sink because if not, they can't sell you the fucking floaties, right? Because if you're not going to fucking drown, you don't need floaties, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm following you. Okay. So here's the problem. Here's the problem. It's the unknown factor. So I can make a better decision if I should get on the, the lifeboat who I should choose to have with me, and how far away from my ship I should sail if I'm doing it based on a clear conscience, clear understanding, educated, uh, well thought out, uh, uh, methodical decision making, reaching out to people like you, people like me, people like Jason, people like all of these other info sources that aren't acting in fear. Reach out to leaders in the space that you don't see responding or marketing to fear and ask them. I've taken phenomenal phone calls with great leaders that I've offered to pay, but we're willing to just share, to just say, hey, what's your theory? And I got to tell you, man, I'm getting great feedback and none of it's fear driven. So now I'm on my lifeboat and I got to tell you, man, last night, none of my staff is in fear. None of my members are in fear. But last night on my last call of the night, I realized the decision I had to make. I needed to stay in the lifeboat, but close to the ship and work on patching the hole because when the viral issue ends, the weather storm clears and I get the sump pumps, 
I can bail the water out and get my crew back on my ship because we built that ship with passion. We built that ship with purpose. That ship had a direction it was sailing in and it had a successful, uh, uh, it was on a successful voyage. So why would I get on it and leave it? Because it got, it got, it got it hit an iceberg. We hit icebergs all the time. We just happen to hit a fucking major one right now. But it doesn't mean you need to abort the ship necessarily, right? So let me try to tie this crazy ass analogy all into one space, which comes back to stop making the decisions on how you're going to run your business based on fear. We'll tie back into the first thing you asked me. Mitigate the damage, right? Uh, relieve yourself of certain expenses that are unneeded, which we've all heard about. Talk to your landlord, email, text, find out if you have a state or local mandated forbearance on the ability to be evicted or on your particular rent. If it's not on your place of business, it might be on your residence. So maybe you don't have to pay your mortgage and you can defer that for three months. Maybe you don't have to pay your actual rent for your apartment. You can defer that. That is all going to be expenses saved that you can put back into patching the hole in your shit, right? Turn off the breakers in your, in your business. Cut the internet. Uh, defer payroll taxes that you're allowed to right now. If you give benefits to your team, defer insurance premiums. A lot of the companies are allowing you to do this right now. They'll keep you fully insured for 90 days with deferred payments. Think, think clearly. Think about the things you have direct effect over, the things that you can move the needle. Contact, if you have six, 700 members, that's a different set of problems because it's hard to reach out to six or 700 and to get that one-on-one. -on -one. But if you're dealing with, if you're dealing with 150 members, 200 members, and you've got three or four people on your team, then you should be directly engaging with them, right? Don't worry about getting 17 new memberships to online forums and going to one-on-one -on -one right now. How, I'm going to go on another side tangent. How, how do you expect if you're losing, if you're worried about losing members because your gym door is closed, right? How are these consultants telling you that you can actually go from a $200 membership to a $500 membership when the individual you would be selling the one-on-one -on, -one on has access to fucking nothing? They can barely get to the supermarket for nutrition. And you're going to give them nutrition planning? I'm eating fucking cashew nuts because I don't want to go to the supermarket and die. And you're going to give me a fucking 12-point meal plan? Are you out of your fucking mind? Right? I'm spooning an avocado. I'm spooning an avocado with a little mayonnaise. Like I'm, like I'm at a fucking Keller's French bakery in Sonoma. And you're going to give me a 12-point nutrition plan? Like, come on. Let's be realistic. Let's work with the situation that we have. Right? We're like, this is like the TV show Naked and Afraid. Like, you don't get to take everything with you. Most of the people don't have access to these gyms anymore. So all your programming for them now is body weight shit and maybe the one dumbbell you lent them. How many one-on-one -on -one personal programs can you give someone with a dumbbell till they get to a point where they're like, I'm paying $500 for this? Like, hey, listen, you're a good dude and I like talking to you, but I, you think I, hear, I want you to call me every single day and ask me how I'm doing while the world is caving in on me? Like, there's, there's and again, I'm going to hyper-dramatize a lot of this to to impose upon the people a point I'm trying to make is that focus on servicing the existing membership base at your $200 range with good quality zoom and engagement and fun contact and social content and social activity and give them nutritional guidelines and tips but I, I don't see how from 150 members you're gonna go to a one-on-one -on -one and maybe keep 65 and try to charge them double to make up for the revenue like I'm having a hard time understanding how that is going to patch the hole in your ship when in 60 days from now, the port opens up again, the weather clears, you have to get back on the ship. But if all you did was focus on your lifeboat, that fucking ship is still sinking, but you're, you have to pay, the, you have to pay the, the, the lease on that boat. So when they tell you you have to start paying your lease, the lease on the boat again and the people want to come back to it, what are you going to tell them? Oh, I was so busy trying to take this lifeboat to another ship. I let that one semi sink. They're like, no, 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 you sunk it, not the iceberg. So everybody's out there focusing. I want to become a digital expert. I want to go online. Well, you're going to compete against street parking and see collective. These people have six figures invested years. They're experts at the craft experts. You are a brick and mortar. 
right? You were, you were an expert at that. Or for some of these people, they weren't even that good at it. That's why they were struggling to begin with. Now they want to go get good something else they know nothing about in 10, 15 days, and then hope that when the air clears, they'll have another revenue stream, but still get to go back and fix that up. And to me, that's where I'm having a hard time. And I apologize for stealing all of, all of your time to talk, but I have a hard time connecting the dots, especially when I see these, these expert consultants on how to operate your business better, who all of a sudden are driving you to buy into what they're selling by fear. All right, let me ask you a two-part question. One, I think a lot of these people are hopping off this boat or sinking their boat because they don't know what they can be doing currently to keep it afloat, right? They, all they see is, hey, we're shut down. My members aren't coming in. So part one is, what can they be doing right now? Part two is, at some point, at least right now, if the, even if they're keeping that boat afloat, they need to figure out what to do. They need to have plan B. You know, they need to hop off the boat. What's the stuff they should be doing then that's not completely investing themselves in it, but still keeping, you know, kind of by default that boat afloat, even though they're hopping out? Great question. Two part, as you mentioned. First thing, as I explained a little bit before, is they need to mitigate the expenses of the ship, right? Make sure the lights are off, the AC unit's down, you're not paying cable, TV, internet, phones, defer payroll tax, defer everything you can. Defer, deflect, defer, right? Your, your landlord can't evict you right away. Don't pay rent if that's the difference between food on your table or food on theirs, yours always comes first, right? Don't, it's like they say, right? Don't ask for permission, you know, provide the apology. Ask for, yeah, ask for, for, ask for forgiveness. That's right. So that's, that's first step, okay? That's first step, is to mitigate. And we can, we can itemize that out. There's companies out there uh, that, are gonna, that are gonna start putting more of that information out and already have, right? I know Push Press and some other uh, affiliate groups started to provide this information, like just simple things in your business you can cut expenses on. That's the first part. The second part is, yes, you do need to be providing value to your members if they're gonna continue to pay. Beyond them just being like, I want to support my community, so I'll pay my membership. Yes, it's okay to do Zoom call, uh, Zoom classes. Yes, it's okay to do two or three a day. Shake it up with body weight, mobility. Yes, it's okay to provide nutritional guidance. Yes, it's okay to do all of that. Content and engagement is key. How you do it is up to you. I'm not a content expert, but I have a resource available to me that's worth a trillion dollars, and it's but it's free. I'm going to blow your mind right now called Google. You can go on Google and you can research every version of great content and engagement for free. Stop going in the affiliate forums and asking other mediocre business owners how to run your business. You're asking the wrong people. It's like you're asking the fucking salmon that are swimming downstream, right, how to, how to spawn. You, you need to be talking to the salmon that are swimming upstream. They're the fucking ones that are headed in the right direction. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, that makes total sense. I know this is going to be really polarizing. These people that are in those affiliate forums are going, what are you talking about? I've got 83 members. That's what I'm talking about. You have 83. You've been open seven years. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but I'm going to. Right? You were so busy in the affiliate forum, you missed Mark Cuban's comp a free talk on, on LinkedIn today. Examples I'm giving. Right? right. These are the fucking the billionaires. These are these are the guys that have that. These are the guys. What do you think? Part right? of that is, you know, maybe wherever you equate your wealth and everything we discussed, you you consider Mark Cuban maybe not a peer, but closer to your level. Where a lot no. of affiliate owners are like, that's a billionaire. They can't relate. No, because he's not giving billionaire advice. Gotcha. Right. Okay. He's not giving billionaire advice. He's giving realistic, strategic advice. Nobody knows how much money I have. So my advice shouldn't be driven by the amount of money I have. My advice is telling you I have a business and it's in a position like everyone else's where it's straining right now. It's struggling. Whether I've lost one member or a hundred, it's struggling because of the environment. My members are struggling. Some are losing their jobs. Some are not sure where their next paycheck is going to come from. That all either goes up the totem pole or down the totem pole strain, right? We're all connected. 
if you want to get philosophical and, and, and get intrinsic and holistic, we're all interconnected in, in my brick environment, right? My ecosystem. If someone gets sick, that sickness translates through the entire system. It fires off neurons through the entire brick organism, right? So we're straining right now. And so because of that, whether you have 80 members or 800, we're both straining. So the advice how to strain less is the same. Don't do it based on fear. Mitigate your expenses out. Communicate with anyone who's willing to defer. And if they're not, defer anyways, and then ask for forgiveness. Do, it bef do everything you can do before it's a can't, right? If you, are you gonna not pay your health insurance if they're not willing to defer it? No, you've gotta figure out a way to make that payment because that is a life-defining situation. Are you allowed to go late on your rent or your mortgage? Yes, they're stating that on the news. The federal government is getting behind you on that. Don't fear that, right? You're, you're gonna listen, you know, listen to these marketers fear you into spending five grand, six grand to buy their how to transition online system, but you're not gonna put that money away to feed your family? What? That's crazy, right? So, so um, I appreciate you saying that because I don't want people to think this is coming from an area of ego. I'm in the same boat as them. No matter how big or small my boat is, it hit the, it hit the iceberg that's in relation to the size of the boat. So if you have 80 members, you hit an 80 member size iceberg. It's just as big as the iceberg is to a 600 member ship, a 600 member iceberg. Does that make sense? Big ship, big iceberg, small ship, small iceberg. It looks the same to the people on the ship. The perspective is the same. It doesn't matter what the size of the dollar is. We all need to be able to, to act th the same. I need to call my landlord with my sizable rent the same way somebody with a $2,000 rent does. It doesn't matter. It's the same phone call, the same email. So they've got to mitigate those issues and those, that exposure. That's the first thing they need to do. The second thing is they need to engage and create content. Go on Google. Use resources. Don't just look to the same affiliate group that's going to judge you. They're going to annihilate you if you say something that's out of line. You know, they're going to make you feel like shit. So why go in there? I'm reading it all the time, and I'm a pretty confident guy. Look at me, right? And I'm nervous at times to talk up in there because, I'm, you know, it's like, I don't, I, you know, I don't want peers of mine annihilating an idea when they don't even know why they're doing it because they just want to hear themselves speak. But what's the takeaway? I'm not, I'm not talking with you today so that I can flex for me. I'm talking with you today in hopes that someone will get something out of this from the fear that I'm recognizing out there. That's the only reason why I'm doing this, right? I have nothing to sell. I have nothing to offer any of these people other than advice of what has happened to me. Don't, I don't want anyone to think, oh, JP, he's a really smart guy. Or JP, he's this, or that. Don't worry about any of that. Listen to the information. Don't mistake the message for the messenger. I'm here with a message that I'm fucking infuriated by other experts in our industry that we look up to that are deliver, delivering a fear-based message to, to motivate you to purchase their services and do things that may not be of best interest to your business because they don't know your business. They don't know your position. They don't know your employees. They don't know your environment. They don't know the tribe you lead. How can they give you proper whole, uh, whole, uh, holistic advice? I'm giving generalizations, right? Things you need to mitigate, things you can do. Go online. Look at what other industries are doing, restaurant industries. You know, they had to switch from eat in to take out. We have to switch from work out inside to digital delivery, right? But do you think, do you think Cheesecake Factory that is doing, maybe they're a bad, a bad example because they could potentially go bankrupt, but do you think Cheesecake Factory plans to be, to be all takeout and delivery when this is over? No, they're going to go right back to standard. Fucking bingo. They're going to go back to dine in because why? That's what they're experts at. Now, may they have a better online facilitation tool when this is over? May they realize that they've been leaving open a gap in the takeout and to-go market? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe for some restaurants, they'll realize it's more profitable to go to a shared kitchen takeout than it is to actually have a physical location. Just like some gyms may realize they're better at going digital and online. And online. But that's not everyone. Brick is not an online digital platform. That's not what our intention is. That's not what we want to do. We are the best in our area at what we do and that's what we will continue to do can we have a better online and digital presence sure 
This exposed a major hole for us. But it wasn't a hole that was bleeding us. It was just a hole that we could have navigated new, new areas of. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like it was a, a missing limb. It was just like a missing opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly how I would have classified it. Like you may take this now and run with it and have to grow a whole new extension of your business, but it wasn't causing you to go bankrupt either. And that's what these boxes are finding. So you're saying, I'm not seeing this. You're seeing boxes that are making such a strong pivot to this online space that they're actually going to hurt themselves long term. I, I believe that a thousand percent because they're spending so much time and effort in these affiliate forums and worrying about all this editing of content and video that they're not, they're not doing a good job of delivering it one, communicating with their members too. And then while they're doing that, patching the holes they had in their boat. Outside of the easy low hanging fruit of canceling some of these subscriptions, what are one or two other things you, you think that boxes can be doing during this downtime? You know, I think it's about, it's about mitigating the, um, the triage, the death toll of your members. Because anyone who tells you they're gonna keep 100% of their membership during this, I would call their bullshit, man. I would call their bullshit, unless they're in an area of the US that's not gonna be affected economically. I'm getting emails in LA. Everybody thinks it's the you know it's rich. Everybody's rich there and don't doesn't have jobs. I'm, I'm getting emails from members that are basically like crying over the fact that they've lost their job and they're extended and they need to take care of their family and their rent and priorities and they can't afford the membership. But they don't want us to judge them for still engaging in the online community. What am I going to tell them? No, you can't join in on Zoom classes. Who the fuck am I? My job is to deliver wellness. That's the commitment I made to this. Right, we've got the, the sickness and health and wellness continuum. I'm gonna let them go sick. They're already emotional and, and, and mentally sick because of what's going on. The last thing they're holding on to is what I have, right? And if I'm being given the gift of, of health, if I've been given the gift of wellness to a point that I can give a little of that now and selflessly give a little extra of myself, why wouldn't I do that? Now's the time. If you're financially in a position where you have a little extra, you can do a little more, now's the time to do it. I'm continuing to pay my entire team. My gym is shut down. We've lost 20% of our members to holds already because they're going unemployed. It's not because we're not delivering a good quality product. You can't tell me that I went from one of the most successful affiliates in the United States of America for the last 10 years to being shitty at what I do in two weeks that I lost 20% of my members. Like, do you think, you know, and honestly, you can be honest with me. Do you think that happened? No, I think, you know, everybody needs to, is just taking a deeper dive into their own expenses. It's a reflection, man. And so, so now I go online and I've got consultants, expert consultants who don't even run gyms anymore, telling me what my gym should look like in battle. And they're not even in the trenches anymore. You're not in the trenches at this time of, of our current economy and current environment. You may have been in the trenches in another war, right? But if you, if you were at war in a snow-based territory and now we're in the fucking desert, it might still be classified as war, but don't some of the tactics change? Absolutely. Doesn't like ammunition, your dress, your boots, some of the artillery change? Of course. Your camouflage has to change? You pick up what I'm putting down, man. And so... The, the battle that we're facing now is different than anyone's ever experienced. So I don't care what you've been through. I want to know, you know, like they tell me, what, you, know, you know, as they say, like, uh, 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 what have you done for me lately? Yes. It's kind of that idea, right? Like, talk to me about now. And so now I ask is, yeah, what about now? What, what's it look like now? Because somebody's getting five memberships to go on hold or 12 or 20 or 30 or cancellations even worse. And they think like, well, I didn't suck last week, but people are losing their jobs. They're, or they're worried that they're, they don't know where their next paycheck's gonna come from. So this is real, this is real. This isn't just like, oh, you need to go online and get a new app and create better content. That's not what it's all about. Nobody, nobody went on hold in the first two weeks of coronavirus 
because your freaking YouTube videos were not awesome. Like, don't tell me that. I didn't build relationships with members for 10 years where all of a sudden a week into coronavirus, they decided I couldn't service them well. It's because it's, there's a lot of uncertainty. Because just like these consultants are feeding me fear to market and motivate, our members are seeing that from everything around them. The news, their own job place, their friends, their family members. Like, come on, let's be realistic. I think what you're saying is excellent. I think you're making an extremely valid point. Hopefully people listening are going to get motivated to take care of that boat. I love that analogy. But, you know, wrapping it up, what are the next steps they should be taking? You know, we like to try to give out tangible, and you've given quite a few out, but really, what else is there to say about this? How, how else can you motivate the masses, the box owners, to, to take action? Cool. So I'm going to do my best with this. And again, I could be completely wrong but I'm going to assume that maybe I'm more right than, than, than some people and, and less right than others. So put me where you want. But here's my, here's my first thought. You are the only expert that truly knows what to do for your business. Because at the end of the day, the only one you will be able to pat on the back for the success or to point the finger at for failure is the individual you see in the mirror because that is who is ultimately responsible. So remember that. If you listen to X expert, Y consultant, or Z marketing guru, they are not to blame if you buy into their bullshit. It's your responsibility. So maybe you actually know better. Maybe the fact that you have less exposure to 100 gyms or less exposure to things that are going on in LA because you're in Omaha, Maybe you have a clearer mind of how to better respond. Or maybe you know your members better than Johnny on, Johnny on Facebook ads, right? Maybe you know better what your business needs to do. Remember, you knew better when you signed the lease. You knew better when you got into this. Now, I'm not saying you made the right decisions, but ultimately, you're going to have to live with that. So when you ask, well, about the boat, about all this stuff, let me give you the harsh reality. If you're not motivated right now to figure out how to patch the hole in the boat, you are certain it will sink. So if this was the out you were looking for because you already knew your business wasn't profitable, successful, functioning well, causing strain in your personal life, your family, you had a second job, then now you have an ego protected way of shutting your business down and not having to reopen it. You'll probably get your landlord to sign you off of your lease. You can mitigate a lot of your exposure and loss, and you can go back to whatever else it was that you were doing that was way easier to be profitable before you got into this passion project. That's one. Two is maybe this buys you the time where you say, you know what? Maybe I am going to lose 50% of my membership, and maybe it is right for me to only invest 75% of my effort on online servicing my existing members. But the other 25%, I'm going to invest into making sure when I'm able to set sail again, that that boat is fucking badass, right? I'm going from like a, a, a shitty 1975 Bayliner to like the, the Donzi you saw at the opening of Miami Vice, where it was like running 40 kilos of Coke across the, you know, the seas outside of Columbia. Like this is your moment to do that, right? You have a chance now, which is the same thing I've told my team. You have a chance now. To come out the backside of this, it's almost like a forced vacation. Don't worry. Um, I thought this was really cool. I don't know if anybody follows Jesse Eitzler, but you know he's a he's a self-made billionaire. His wife founded Spanx. He owns the Atlanta Hawks. He started um, Marquee Jets. You know, from basically nothing. If anybody on here is listening, follow him. He's like you and I, dude. He's just a normal guy. Wears beanies and shit. Made a billion. Married a girl. Became a billionaire. He's just badass, right? Doesn't give a shit. Doesn't worry about having every great, you know, studied every per perfect quote in the book to sound super smart. He just knows by experience. But here's what he said. Because you have all this downtime, it doesn't mean you need to be waking up at five o'clock in the morning thinking about how much more information can I consume and become better and get focused because now people are freaking out like, oh, I, I need to watch more podcasts and read more books and focus only on my business 18 hours a day because I have no distractions. That's that's not how you can be the most clear, right? 
that's not how you get your best ideas. You know, K Star, Kelly Starrett once told me when he heard I was moving, he's like, JP, for your business and your employees, you moving out of LA is going to be the best thing for your business you've ever done. Because by re removing that forced distraction on you, you're going to become so fucking creative and clear. You're going to take your business to a place you never thought it could go. And you know what? That son of a bitch, not only is he super supple, he was right. He was right. And this is a time to give people a chance to be stuck at home where the world's going to slow down a little bit, where they can focus on their membership, focus on their engagement, focus on their team, and focus on them, their family obvious, right? Like focus on your family, healthy environment, but focus on how to make your boat better, how to patch up the hole, how you're going to get passengers back on it, but do it from a clear state. You're not going back. You're not opening in a week. You're not opening in two weeks. So slow down a little bit, right? Pull the brakes back. Stop going in the affiliate forums all day, every day, and reading all the negative nonsense. Like, put some filters and blinders on. Watch some funny shit on TV. Take a walk outside, you know? Keep your social distancing. But if you have a yard, go walk barefoot in it. Go breathe in some cold air. Like, start to have some introspection and reflect. Why did my boat hit such a big, a big iceberg? Or why did my boat hit such a small iceberg? Why is my boat so small? Why is my boat so badass? Or why is it, why is the paint suck? You know, you see where I'm getting at? Like, take some time to just figure it all out. And don't be so worried about getting up at four and getting on your Peloton or going for a six mile run because when you come out the backside of this, you want to be more fit. No, come out, ask, just don't come out any fatter. As a guy who's into nutrition, you can respect that, right? Like, Absolutely. you don't have to come out more fit. But don't come out more fat. You don't have to come out, um, you know, this expert, but come out with some, some new stuff. Maybe you have a new hobby, a new, maybe you have knowledge in a new area, a new interest. Maybe you've read books about business that have nothing related to health and wellness. Maybe you read a biography. Maybe you watched documentaries and got into something. Like, try to do things that aren't directly related to your gym and see if that actually sparks how to better manage, operate, and run your gym. That makes perfect sense. I think people need to embrace this time. That's what I was just telling my wife earlier. I was like, I could do this forever. You know, it's obviously no one wants to, but part of me is like, this, this pace, it's not too bad. We're reading, we're walking the dogs, we're hitting one workout a day. It's kind of nice. Yeah, and by the way, buddy, so you make a perfect statement, right? And I don't want to get us too long-winded, but dude, you just explain what the real meaning of wealth is. So when people heard me, heard me say it at the beginning of this call, they probably went right to money. But you're not doing it based on money, right? You wouldn't need to have 10 million in the bank to do what you do. You just need to do what you want, just mentioned. Um, yeah. You just need enough to keep food on the table, the lights on, a smile on your face, a sweatshirt on your back, and, and make sure that you have good health care, right? Like good health insurance, because ultimately that's what we want our businesses to do for us. So that's where I'm saying like people need to have some introspection. Like you don't need to have a 10,000 square foot house to be able to enjoy the quarantine with a little bit of downtime in your family. So cut the stress back. Think about the things in your life that were just extending that stress. And maybe now's the time to mitigate and cut those out. Maybe now's the time to scale back on certain life's expenses that you didn't need. Expensive friends, expensive hobbies, expensive habits, and think, think more clearly. And then allow those things to match your current state of income because in today's reality, you know, money provides for a lot of that. But what money doesn't provide is for you being able to sit on your couch and hang out with your wife, right? You just need to create those opportunities. And now's the best time ever for people to do that. I love it. We went from a dialed up, you know, ratcheted up 11 all the way back down to a, maybe a three on that emotion scale. That was really, that was really good. And I hope people paid attention to that because a lot of good nuggets in there and a lot of really important things to be thinking about from someone that's doing it well and has done it well. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge and, sharing your thoughts. Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. And, you know, I really, I really just hope that, because I know I have a really alpha style personality and I come off aggressive, but, 
you know, listen, man, I eat, you know, I eat, sleep, shit, bleed and breathe the same way everyone else on, you know, that's going to listen to this does, man. You know, nothing I do is big, better, badder, or different than anyone else. And it's just a matter of perspective. And uh, everyone's problems are just as important. Everyone's dollar is worth the same based on today's economy. And everyone's uh, challenges should be respected as the next. And it's just a matter of creating perspective and, and understanding that, uh, you know, nobody is an expert other than the individual you're staring at in the mirror because that's the one that ultimately is going to shoulder the responsibility of what this looks like on the back end of it. So if I could say anything to any, everybody, it's, you know, just, just stay physically healthy, stay emotionally as fit as you can right now because it's wild times. Just kind of keep, try to keep your emotions in check and don't make any decisions based on fear because fear as it's broken down stands for false emotions appearing real F E A R false emotions appearing real. You are fearing something that hasn't happened yet. Great way to end it. I really like that. Thanks for sharing. We're going to have you back on to talk more about this. I think you're, I mean, I know what you're saying. There's no experts in this, but you're, you're kind of an expert in this. So we'll, we'll have you back on to talk more about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Be well. Enjoy your family. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of Best Hour of Their Day. Thanks again for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. And thanks again to our special guest. We appreciate all you guys do for us with Best Hour of Their Day when it comes to sharing our posts on Instagram, when it comes to subscribing to us on YouTube, when it comes to the constant feedback. We are grateful and we appreciate it. We are trying to build a community based on coaching development and becoming the best version of yourself. And it goes without saying that we couldn't do without all of you. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Season one of Dropping In is out. We are getting tremendous feedback and we'd love for you to check it out. Leave us a comment on there. Head over to our Instagram. Give us a follow like our pictures, feel free to share anything that resonates with you. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback for us, please don't hesitate. Email us besthouroftheirday at gmail.com. Thanks again. Until the next episode, we hope you've had the best hour of your day.